the first span and clock starts now right at the churn over to Petudos first band. Ten seconds. <clears throat> Ten seconds. Gumpy on the Lyra and Mizu on the Kashka, uh, both heroes that they know very, very well. Kashka is one of those heroes that uh, she can try to start to dominate that early game, but uh, I'm not so sure about picking the uh, the, the Kashka into the pedal. Um, but that's something that uh, we're going to have to see how it plays out in the game. Um, once again, we have another Black Feather pick. It looks like Black Feather is being prioritized. Uh, a little bit higher than he has been in uh, some of some of the other matches. Uh, and so we're going to see if Blackfeather can pull out another win. I believe he did have a win earlier today. Um, it's the first time that we're seeing Akashka. Uh, it, and also it seems like Viola has been getting through a little bit more than expected. So uh, on the... We're going to have to see if those two heroes can uh, make a make a difference together. Black for their barrier is huge. You add that on to the Viola barrier uh, and with Petal Heals, uh, there's going to be a lot of damage coming out. 
However, I wonder if uh, this is going to be a weapon power black feather with a crystal petal or vice versa. I would hate to see the, a double crystal comp coming out. Uh, it's just something that doesn't really seem to work in this update in the current meta. Uh, Kashka understands that she's not stronger level one. Um, so she's going to try to get that level two and then contest from there and uh, use this to push the advantage. Yeah, and both teams understanding that uh, they the side of Petudos does start with the center tree and, and just moves out from there. Uh, so both teams are perfectly understanding uh, who has the stronger level one here. <clears throat> All right. Now, from this point forward, this is uh, where Kasha is going to try to start dominating the jungle. Uh, Petal is just a tiny bit late on her rotation. Um, and here's a three-man rotation. Uh, once again, Kestrel up in lane is taking a little bit too long to rotate down. Uh, so this might just be a free... Yeah, there it is. That's that free center tree. And uh, Kashka really w wanted to go in there. Uh, she thought about it, uh, but in the end, she didn't go for it. Yeah, a little uh, Gumpy just using that Imperial Sigil to heal up a little bit. Uh, Kashka, when she uses her, her Twirly Death, her B ability, she's able to get a couple of basic uh, attacks which are empowered. Uh, meanwhile, Pouncy Fun is just going to jump in. Uh, to, it's really good for last hitting, but she doesn't have a banner. She's opting to just go straight for that uh, straight for that damage. So she wants to be a little bit stronger in fighting, uh, a little bit uh, not quite as concerned with stealing a couple of those earlier treants, which she thought she was just going to lose anyway. So I think that so far this game is going all right for the side of the mod team. Um, yeah, meanwhile, uh, it looks like Blackfeather is building crystal power and there's also crystal power on the pedal that's that double crystal power that i i really didn't want to see it's just too easy to itemize against if this uh even while akashka falls off if this game starts to go even a little bit later um you're just going to see the shrouds come out and once the shrouds come out there's not very much that that uh that those heroes are going to be able to do to continue to do damage however look at look at this the pedal just does absolutely huge damage, especially once she gets that center tree. And uh, the black feather picks up the kill on the Kestrel. Uh, looks like Kashka is going to just use her bouncy fun to get away. Um, at first, Gumpy's going to try to use the Imperial Sigil and um, the Bright Bulwark to provide disengage for Mizu. So there's not three kills going on. But uh, yeah, already a 2.3 gold lead for the side of. The Petudos, uh, they're going to even start doing a little bit of damage to turret here. Um, I almost want to see Petal switch to weapon power. Uh, it sounds a little bit weird to say, but uh, if this game goes goes on for even a little bit too long, um, while Kashka does fall off, they, we're going to see itemization against that. But currently, Petal is just a, a great pick into that Kashka. Um, and you're seeing exactly why. Uh, if Kashka is not able to get on somebody and, and burst them down, then she loses uh, what makes her so strong. And Petals provides just too much disengage uh, with the Bramble Bloom seeds. And she her chase is also something to be absolutely reckoned with. Um, so here's a level 6 Kashka. That's something that we have to talk about. Um, the level 6 Kashka is... You want within five minutes of playing against Akashka, everybody has to have a block because that is a 2.2 second stun. Um, perhaps they feel that they can just survive that stun. Um, I'm expecting to see an infusion come out and then to try to fight because if Kashka doesn't start taking over this game right now at minute five, uh, it's going to start getting too late. We see two infusions in the pocket of both Blackfeather and the Petal. Uh, that means that they are both ready to infuse at the same time for, for the next team fight. They don't want to let up for a single second uh, moving on into the mid game. Uh, the gold miner is just being poked at a little bit. 
by the side of Petudos. There's a bright bulwark to come coming up from Gumpy just to provide a tiny little bit of disengage. Uh, perhaps the side of Petudos were getting too close. Uh, now it looks like Petudos is starting the gold miner. The side of the mod team knows that this is happening. Um, it doesn't look like there's much of a contest. Yeah, besides Gumpy being there, uh, and Gumpy just picks up that gold. Uh, Gumpy goes for the gold miner, but he doesn't end up picking it up. So that's 300. And, I believe it was 338 gold going on to each member of the side of Petuto. So that's about another thousand gold lead. Uh, Mizu does end up popping her infusion here. Uh, just going to continue to clear out the jungle. Almost nothing stolen at this point. Um. And yeah, that's about a 3k gold lead going on to the side of uh, Petudos. So Petudos feel strong here. They feel confident. Um, they feel like they're ahead. I think that they need to just keep rotating through I would, and uh, pushing their advantage. I'm surprised to not see more rotations by Petudos into the jungle just to try to completely shut down this Kashka. But perhaps they don't want to be fighting uh, Kashka too much in her native element. Um, but especially with that pedal, I, I would expect pedal to be able to rotate in and win a little bit harder uh, uh, into this jungle. So that's something they're leaving on the table, but uh, being just a little bit cautious. Uh, although here here it is, uh, they're, they're rotating onto Gumpy. Lyra is one of the squishiest supports. Um, they force back Gumpy. Gumpy has to is forced to burn boots to get away. Uh, a Imperial Sigil just to provide a little bit of speed boost to the Kashka. Kashka just sort of posturing in lane, not really doing anything. The Kestrel recalls uh, to try to go buy some items. Uh, she wasn't particularly low. She just wants to go buy. Or, sorry, that was the Lyra, which recalls my, my mistake. And then Lyra comes back, provides the heal onto the Kashka. Kashka is just waiting in order, a chance to use her ultimate. This is something you don't see very often. Uh, Kashka having an ultimate for two and a half minutes and just not using it. There she goes. She tries to use it under tower, um, but does not get it under tower. So instead, the tower is just burned down. Kashka is forced to walk away. And this game is quickly, quickly slipping away from the, the mod team. Uh, this is a four, no, a 5k gold lead in just eight minutes, and the second turret is just about to go down. We'll see if Blackfeather ends up taking it. Um, perhaps see, double CP can work if you're able to win fast enough, if you're not, uh, if you don't give the enemy team time to itemize into the defense against it. Meanwhile, the second gold mine is uh, being taken. One shot, one kill, which is, was a great attempt, but 365 gold is taken by the side of Petudos. One gold each for the number of days that the mod team is going to be regretting this match so far. And it, there is some, look at these, just heals coming out from the pedal. Kaska tries to go in and dive, but instead he just dies. Uh, Kestrel is trying to rain down as much damage as she possibly can, but at this point, it's, it's just not enough. Kestrel also goes down. They're going to try to chase through the Arcane Passage, a defensive Arcane Passage, something that you never want to do as a Lyra. Um, these prevent the ace, which perhaps that's going to allow Kashka to get a kill, but no, nobody is low enough, uh, and they're even able to sweep through and take the jungle. Um, not sure what the gold lead. Kashka managed to steal a single bear. Gets a pretty good ult onto the target that she wanted, along with the Crystal Miner, but instead just instantly dies again. Um, Kestrel's trying as hard as she can to get something, some kills out of this. Gumpy with a really nice Imperial Sigil. One shot, one kill does hit, but look at the Bramble Bloom seeds. Kestrel has to just carefully walk through that maze of Bramble Bloom seeds on the ground. Uh, a very nice active camo does manage to eventually get the kill on the Kestrel. Now both of them are low. They decided to go for that sentry. Kaska knows that they're going to have to walk away. She's trying as hard as she can to get there. I think that she will, but no, they're able to get away just in time. Oh, perhaps if Kaska had chased just a little bit further, she could have gotten there in time while they were low. Um, instead, all three of them are up. Kaska only manages to steal the front healing treant and the two front bears um i'd say overall that was a, a very well played fight from the side of petudos they're now up 7k cold in 10 minutes all they have to do is continue to play cleanly maybe take a another gold miner um at a 
at just around the 11 minute mark. Uh, it looks like they're already starting to posture around it while they see the Kestrel in lane. Gumpy on that line is just standing a bush. They understand that they can't let more gold go onto the enemy t team, but it does anyway. 307 gold this time. Still not much uh, crystal defense itemization coming out from the side of the mod team. Blackfeather just sprinting in. Uh, throwing his on point, getting huge barriers, and doing huge damage all at the same time. It's going to be another minute until the Kraken comes up. It's an 11 to 1, 7k gold lead for the side of Petudos. Uh, they're just going to wait about a minute for the Kraken to come up and uh, try to, to take it just at that time. Uh, I'm not sure there's much that the mod team can do at this point. Uh, Kashka has already kind of reached her strongest point of the game, which which was minutes ago, and it's just been slowly falling off. Um, meanwhile, Kestrel hasn't really had a chance to to farm up. Look at this. Kaska just got a position, tries to get an ult off on somebody, but absolutely no damage. Um, the the Petudos just get a free pick, basically, and don't take anything for it besides a single turret shot. Viola just throwing barriers out the entire time uh, so that the damage isn't even coming through. Uh, what little damage the Kestrel and the Kashka can put through at this point um, is not even enough to get through the Viola barriers. So unless we see one of the biggest throws um, in CE community tournament history, I don't think that there's going to be much of a turnaround here. The Kraken is going to spawn in another 5 seconds, 12 minutes and 15 seconds. There it is. The Kraken is up. And, and because the side of my team is here, they decide we're just going to go in. We're going to focus the Kashka, and that's exactly what they do. Viola's throwing out barriers. All three of Petudos are at full health. A beautiful block to get through the active camo. Blackfeathers just sticks onto the Kestrel. There's an ace. Uh, I'm expecting them to get a little bit of a jungle here and go for the first turret, then Kraken. But it doesn't really matter which order they want to do it. Instead, they decide to just go for the Kraken and... Looks like Blackfeather himself is taking the jungle. Petal is a little bit slow at taking Kraken uh, along with the Viola, but it, it hardly matters. Um, Blackfeather is going to sweep through, take the entire jungle. Um, the Kraken will be low by the time they get there. The mod team can't contest. Um, unless Blackfeather does a little bit of an overstay here. The ult, he doesn't, the Blackfeather does not ult away from that, but there's barriers, there's heals, yeah, they're just too far ahead. And Kestrel wasn't even with them. Uh, that was just uh, Gumpy and Mizu rotating to the jungle. I, I'm not sure why Kestrel wasn't with them at that point. Um, she's trying to just burn down the turret, but it's going to give her life for it. The mod team is falling apart, folks. Just completely falling apart. Gumpy goes in. Once again, Gumpy makes it a heroic play. There's just no other way to put it. He uses the Arcane Passage to go in to save the Kestrel. He throws out the Imperial Soldier for the heal. He has a Crucible block. And now it looks like the side of the Petudos got a little bit thrown off by uh, the, the level of Gumpy's play there. It seems like they got a little bit confused at why the Kestrel wasn't dead. Uh, but... It, once again, it, it doesn't. It probably won't matter that much in the grand scheme of things, except that finally we're seeing a little bit of crystal item, uh, crystal defense itemization coming out from. Yeah, I think that is two. No, Kestrel has not uh, finished her shroud yet, uh, but the Kashka has finished her shroud, and that's going to mean she's going to be able to go in and a little bit harder, and perhaps not die quite as fast. Um, so the side of the Petudos better think about ending this quickly with their double uh, crystal comp. So it looks like uh, they're going to try to push this down, and, and hopefully if Petudos can play this correctly, they should be able to just push in with this Kraken and uh, try to get a pick, maybe win. Look at the size of those barriers on the two carriers, uh, on the two carries. Kestrel is just doing a little bit of poke damage onto the Viola, and there's a giant, giant wave coming through at the same time. This might just be the game, folks. Um, no, the Kraken goes down, and a three-man sleep, that's going to result in... 
nothing, actually. Uh, Koska turns it around with a pretty big giant old Koska raining down the damage. Absolutely crazy play. I don't think that uh, Petal's going to be able to get out of this one. Those Shrouds are just doing too much work. Uh, but you have to remember that the side of the Petunos are still pretty far ahead. But that that was uh, that was pretty much a win for the side of the mod team. Petunos only got two turrets there. Uh, I believe that the mod team is going to be able to finish two more Shrouds on, on the other two players. Not sure if that's the case. We're going to have to see. Um, but the, the, the double crystal is going to kind of do uh, less and less damage as, as things go on here. And the the side of the Petutos doesn't have that same advantage of being able to buy a single defensive item and negate all of the damage. Damage coming out of all three of the heroes, even including the little bit of crystal damage that Viola does. There's basically... Yeah, there's two Strouds. Kestrel still doesn't have a completed. I'd love to see that go on the Kestrel, but see, Koska just doesn't have to be afraid anymore. Uh, the stun comes out onto the pedal, and they're just absolutely focusing. Look at that focus. Uh, the focus of the mod team, they know exactly what they're doing, but Blackfeather, unbelievable. Now the Kestrel is the one who doesn't have the Shroud, and she's still alive. I think that Blackfeather can stick to her, but no, look at this play. Unbelievable. The, the Koska goes down, but then the, the pedal goes down first, then the Koska. The Black Feather thinks he has enough damage, and now Viola's just left completely by herself. Viola's one of those heroes that uh, if her carries go down, she doesn't have too much escapability. And we have an ace coming out. We have a game on our hands, folks. Uh, I think that perhaps at this stage, because of that double crystal power, um, it's just, it's going to swing more and more in favor of the mod team, even with Koska falling off a little bit. The itemization is just too easy on the side of the the, the mod team. You, If you look at Blackfeather's defense, for example, uh, his build, he has a... a he has he's building into two defensive items. Uh, he's probably going to go for an Atlas second item onto the Kestrel. But that means he only has three uh, damage items. Um, and CP Blackfeather wants to be able to doing be able to do as much damage as you possibly can. You really want to have four damage items on a CP Blackfeather. Um, now he's going to have a pretty good amount of survivability with that Serpent's Mask. And yeah, there's the Atlas. Uh, so they understand that the bigger amount of damage is going to be coming out of Kestrel. Now, here comes the, the next crack, and look at those giant barriers. Once again, the focus of the mod team, they know exactly who they want to be going for. Um, but it's taking a little bit too long to burn through that health bar this time. And no, they didn't have that same type of engage. Koska's trying to get at least a kill onto the pedal. Doesn't get it. This is going to be the ace. Petunos is probably just going to walk into base and get the kill. Gumpy knows how to get out of these types of situations, but he will eventually go down. Uh, this is this is a pick how you want to do it type of situation. Uh, the side of Petunos, they could take the crack, and I I think they should probably just walk into the base and uh, and take it. But no, they go for the Kraken. Um, Ten seconds until Kestrel comes up. Um, so it looks it looks like uh, they're at least going to take. Oh my goodness, Kat. there there was a, that was stolen away from them. Um, but here we go. They're not even waiting for the Kraken. They understand that this is a two v three. While there are two shrouds out. Uh, they do have a ton of damage. They have a giant ace minion wave. Uh, this is probably looking like it's going to be a game. A nice block on to the onto the yummy catnip frenzy. Uh, they are. They know who they want to focus. They are focusing down that pedal. They do manage to do it, but it's not fast enough, folks. We have Petutos taking this game before the Kraken even gets there. 19 minutes and 9 seconds. That is a 3-1 to one win for the side of Petutos. Petutos has just won the $300 grand prize. The mod team goes down 3-1, to one. folks. There you have it. That is the game. That's the match. That's the tournament.